welcome to Review the Light. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Next Torch P8A, a programmable flashlight. But really quick, before we get into it, make sure you click this button right down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. This one right up here to follow me on Facebook. That'll keep you up to date on the latest reviews and videos. So, the uh, P8A, like I mentioned, is a uh, programmable flashlight. I will um, not go through all the specs here, but if you want to take a look at them, just feel free to pause the video for a second. You can look at anything on any side of the box here. So, uh, now we'll go ahead and open it up. Alright, inside it looks like we have the flashlight itself. a lanyard and the USB cord here USB on one end, micro USB on the other and a fairly thick owner's manual oh, owner's manual and what's this here looks like instruction manual for the software so it looks like the uh, flashlight itself and the software have separate uh, owner's manuals so there's that now, like I said, this is a programmable flashlight. We won't get into that aspect quite yet. First, we'll just take a look at the flashlight itself here. So if you look down there, it looks like it uses an XML, maybe an XML2 emitter. Can't quite tell. Just looking at it right now, I'll check on the manual in a minute. You can see it uses a textured reflector that'll help smooth out the beam um, but make it not quite throw quite as far. You can see we've got the crenellated bezel here on this side just a very simple body knurled there for extra grip. Here's a side switch the next torch logo there, next torch logo on each side along with the model number there and a flat tail a hole in the side where you can attach a lanyard if you like open it up and take a look inside. It looks like that didn't. Okay, and that exposed the charging port. So that's that there. And on this side here we've got a spring on the tail cap and a next switch brand 18650 battery that it uh, is included with the light. So there's that. And if you look down you might be able to see, you might not be able to tell with the lighting, but there's another spring on the far end of the battery compartment. So that's the inside. We'll put it back on. I like this uh, design that reveals the USB port um, by unscrewing it. So we have a, you can see there's a um, an O-ring there to help keep the water out so I like that we'll see how waterproof it is but that should keep a uh, general dust and water at least out of the USB port which I like it's a pretty elegant design I like that better than some of the removable rubber covers that I see on other flashlights to reveal and hide the USB port so we'll go ahead and plug it in just to demonstrate that so this will go either into a USB port on your computer or a USB charging adapter on a wall or in your car or something like that. The micro USB side will attach to the flashlight. Alright, when I'm plugged in I've got a little red light there that lets me know I'm charging. I'm guessing that'll turn green or else turn off or something once it's done charging. So ignoring the programmable nature of the flashlight, it's got a pretty simple operation. I'll go ahead and unplug that and screw it back in here. So uh, as you can see, there's no uh, tail button. There's just a side switch here. So to turn it on and off, you just do a single click to the side switch. Or if you hold down halfway, you can do momentary on. It'll turn off again as soon as you release. Uh, when the light's on, you can just half press the side switch to cycle through the, the four modes. Looks like we have a high, a medium, a low, and a strobe. And when you turn it off and back on, let's see if it has mode memory. Nope, looks like it always comes back to the high mode. So you always know when you turn it off 
when it comes back on, you can expect it to come back on in the high mode all the time. So that's uh, good to know. So that's the simple operation of the next switch PA8A. And uh, now I will, uh, won't go into a lot of details about the software, but I will uh, give you a brief look at it here. All right, so the software is pretty simple to figure out and use. Um, a quick note, you'll notice I'm using a MacBook, uh, but the software only runs on Windows. I'm running in boot camp right now for Windows, so don't get confused there. The software only works for Windows. Um, you can see I've got uh, the flashlight plugged in there, uh, USB to the flashlight on one side, the computer on the other side. Um, the red light's on indicating that I'm plugged in correctly. Um, you just, all you have to do is you go to the website indicated in the manual, click download, and then uh, open the file and click next several times and the program will install. So here is the program itself. It's uh, pretty simple. We'll zoom in a little bit. It gives you a pretty good view of it. So um, up here it tells me I'm connected, so I know I've got the flashlight hooked up right. And it uh, cycles through some advertisements with other products down there. <coughs> So, uh, we've got the mode sequence here, and this is the factory mode sequence that it uses. And basically what it allows you to do is change um, what happens uh, for any, uh, what happens during that mode sequence. So you can add as many uh, parts to that sequence as you like. I'm not, uh, I haven't found any sort of a limit here. Like now I'm up to 15 um, different, 19 different uh, mode sequences and I'm still going, it hasn't stopped me yet. Okay, here at 20, looks like there's a limit of 20, so you can uh, only set up to 20 different uh, settings to go through in the mode sequence, and then all you'll do is for each one of these you can change what it does. So say, I'll go back up here to the beginning, um, the default is to have this first mode be just the 100% brightness. Uh, all, I can, all I need to do is click and drag if I can get my mouse to line up here click and drag that and I can say okay instead of 100% brightness I want the first mode to be 39% brightness and then to check it what I can do is hit this test button and then it'll test that brightness and see you know, is that the brightness I like eh, maybe I want it a little bit brighter so I'll crank that up a little bit and then I'll hit test again and it increases the brightness I don't know if you notice that but increase the brightness there uh, maybe I want to take it down to 1% test that yeah, that's what the 1% looks like. Um, so you can adjust for each mode um, the brightness, or I can go, instead of illuminance, I can go to frequency here and choose a strobing frequency. So this is uh, 5 hertz, so one every half second. Maybe I want it to strobe faster. All I have to do is click and drag that. I have a ton of trouble landed it in the right spot here. The mouse is a little touchy running in boot camp. There we go. Um, now this is 13.5 uh, hertz and I'll tell it to test that and it say maybe that's what I like. Um, another, op the final option is to set something to this customize and then up here what you can do is uh, customize a pattern of on and off. So if I want to do SOS or maybe some other Morse code, um, I can tell it to be on for a certain period of time and then off for a certain period of time. And I can do that several times as well. Um, so maybe I want to have it, you know, start by being on for, well, if I can, I'll have it on for, uh, ten for a second and then off for almost two seconds and then I'll have it on and off again for 50 milliseconds and then I'll do another about a second of on and then a little over a second of off so um, we'll just test that and see how that goes So that's a little pattern that I made, and you can make uh, longer patterns if you want, but that might be useful for um, programming some uh, Morse code signal other than SOS, which is actually a pretty fun feature that you don't see very often, um, or anything else that you might uh, think of for that. So um, once you've got all that, you just tell it save, and I can save um, on my computer what I want, uh, I can hit upload, and you can uh, it'll take that. There we go. I'm okay. So I'll unplug it. I'll try it out. 
So when I first turn it on, it's in my 13.5 hertz frequency. And then I go to the next mode, and it does my little pattern that I made. And then I go to the next mode, and it's at the, uh, let's see, we're in the 5%, looks like all the rest of it is the 5% luminance now. Looks like I might have double clipped on accident through my 10 hertz frequency. So all my 20 modes of 5%. So there's back to the 13.5 hertz row. My little pattern is next. And then, yeah, there's the 10 hertz frequency. And then, again, the rest of my 20 that I didn't set at the 5%. Um, so that's uh, pretty simple how to uh, program it. And then if you want to put it back to the settings that it comes with, you just plug it back in. I'm not quite plugged in all the way here. There we go. And then you tell it a uh, factory data reset, and it goes back. So that's uh, why you'd want to save your, uh, if you have a setup that you like, you'd want to make sure and hit save there and save the file for it. So um, that is uh, the software. So stick around for just a second, and we will take the PA day outside and uh, give it a shot in the dark. All right, so here we have a uh, nylon holster, Big Nick Torch brand uh, right there. Um, you can, I'll just, um, if you want to read anything on there, I'll just hold it there for a second. You can pause the video. I won't read all that to you. But there's that. I'll go ahead and take it out. Uh, on the back, it's got this uh, Velcro flap you can use here that also buttons down. Yeah, or you can secure something to this loop, like clip it onto something. And a Velcro flap here goes over the flashlight itself, just like that, and uh, allows the end of the flashlight to stick out the bottom. And I'll uh, show you what the uh, flashlight looks inside of it here. All right, so here's the PA day in the holster. You can see it just slides right down there. It fits pretty snugly. It doesn't uh, stick out the bottom at all. You can see it's well covered. So there it is in the holster. All right, this is a uh, scope mount. It says it's got a quick attach and quick release mechanism. I will, if you want to read anything on there, I'll let you pause the video and take a look. All right, and we'll open it up. Not to scratch it here. And there it goes. <laughs> Alright, so here's the scope mount. And you can see it's got a quick release mechanism. You might be familiar if you, uh, it looks pretty similar to me to like what I see on a bicycle quick release reel. And a screw mechanism there. It should fit a variety of flashlight sizes. So that's a nice mechanism. And we will put the flashlight okay, in Okay, so we'll go ahead and stick the PA-Day into the mount. And you'll notice that there's that padding there on the sides. It protects your flashlight or your uh, scope or your mount from getting scratched up, and it also helps absorb shock. Uh, so I see you just tighten it down. You'd have the scope or the light in the other end there, uh, the, um, barrel on the other side and, uh, and then you're just attached right there and it's pretty firm and then if you want to oh, it looks like hit the button by accident so you want to make sure that you <laughs> attach it so that the buttons where you want it to be and then just a quick release and it slides right out so that's the uh, quick release scope mount all right this is uh, the tactical mount accessory here I'll just let you pause there if you want to read anything on the package there there's the back side. Um, so compared to the scope mount that we looked at, it's a little bit smaller and uh, the difference is mainly that it's uh, not quick release. It has a little hex screws as you'll see and it comes with a little hex, hex wrench which is nice. Alright, so 
we can get a focus on that. You can see instead of the quick release, it's going to screw on and remain tight. Sorry, my camera's having trouble focusing today. Um, but yeah, you, the two screws there attach the gun on one side and the flashlight on the other. And like I said, it provides the correct size hex wrench, which is nice. Most people probably have their own hex wrench set, but it's nice just to have one here included so you don't have to go searching for it. So that just loosens and tightens like that. And uh, we'll grab the flashlight to stick it in there and you can see how that looks. Alright, so we'll slip the PAA into the tactical mount here. It looks like I've, yeah, just got right about the right size. So I'd have the PAA on the one side and the, it looks like I got some sort of debris there. Um, my gun or whatever else I'm mounting it to on the other side there and then just tighten it down with my uh, hex key and that'll keep it pretty secure. Um, so um, uh, comparing this to the scope mount obviously this is going to be for more permanent uh, if you want something mounted more permanently and want it to be very sturdy. Uh, if you want to be able to move things around a little bit easier and don't need quite the strength then you might go for that quick release scope mount. So um, that is uh, the tactical mount there. Thanks for sticking around with Review the Light. We've got the next Torch P8A back here in the uh, out, back here in the dark, and we will uh, give it a shot. Fire it up. So here you go. You can see there's a definite spot, a very smooth transition out into the spill. A fairly narrow spill beam overall. We'll take a look around here, so you can get an idea of how the beam goes. It's got a decent amount of throw, not a lot, uh, for how, but um, for how compact it is, it's pretty good. And as uh, as you know, you know this, the main feature of this slide isn't its output or its throw, but the fact that you can program it. But it still performs well out in the dark here. We go to its lower mode. Now, the, this is still, for me, projecting a good beam on the side of the hill. You probably can't see it too well on the camera now, but it is there. Um, still plenty of light to walk around by. Um, I would even dial it down a little bit. I would want, uh, you know, for my program that I'll make for myself, I'll definitely make the lower, the lowest mode lower than this if I can, uh, so I can have a lower mode available. But this is a good, I'd keep a mode around this, uh, around this spot just for general walking around, but I'd want something lower also for if I didn't want to ruin my night vision or if I didn't want to be seen walking around or anything like that. So, this is the next torch P8A. Thanks for checking it out at Review the Light. If you have any more questions about it, be sure to check out the link that I'll put in the description to the full review. That'll show you everything you need to know and give you the beam shots, the runtime graph, spectral distribution, all that fun stuff. So thanks for stopping by and have a great night. <laughs>